everybody. I hope you're having a fantastic day. You may remember a couple of months ago when I reviewed this microscope on my channel and I've covered the brand name because it really has nothing to do with this particular brand. If you look for this form factor here on microscopes all over the web, you'll see that this is a common model that is just rebadged with a whole bunch of different companies names. And to be honest, for the price, it's a great unit. But there were a couple of instances where it fell short that I had some real specific needs. So I went out looking for something a little bit different. And I came across a company called Andonstar and I asked them if they'd provide for me one of their bigger scopes and they were nice enough to do that for the channel. So here it is. This is the Andonstar AD409 microscope. And as you can tell, it is a little bit different. Now we'll get to the pictures and the features and all that kind of stuff in a little bit, but there were a couple of reasons why I specifically wanted this microscope. Now, all of these scopes will connect to your computer basically like a webcam, but this one has HDMI out, which allows me to put it on a giant screen and get basically real time, high resolution, high frame rate streaming and capturing of what's going on in the microscope. Now I could use USB out, but I found that the quality just wasn't very good when I was capturing over USB. And I could use the micro SD, but that's not live. And to be honest, the quality wasn't very great when I was doing micro SD cards. So I wanted something that had HDMI and this fits the bill. So that actually makes this microscope fantastic for anyone who wants to do any kind of live streaming, any kind of live teaching, um, where you want people to be able to see what you're doing in real time. There are a couple of other things that really stand out about this microscope, and you wouldn't realize it at first, but the ability to position these lights exactly where you want them is kind of huge. You can decide to put them back here and light them from this way and get them out of the way, or you can come right down there and get a ton of light on something that you can't see. And as you can see here, this one, um, and it looks like I've, you know, maybe I, I put some kind of, fakery on here but this is really if i just barely get this tuned in perfect you can kind of read these letters over here where these are crystal clear and that's not just the screen size that's better lighting and better optics and when you're trying to read small part numbers that is irreplaceable another thing you may have noticed is that the focal length on this microscope is a lot further than this one so this one gives me 50 millimeters between the lens and the deck to do soldering, where this one gives me 75. So this one's a full 50% further to get roughly the same size screen, but plenty more room to come here and work with my soldering iron. Speaking of soldering, one of the things people warned me about was that the other microscope could be damaged from soldering underneath of it, but this one actually comes with a removable filter to protect the optics as you're soldering so that you can actually clean this and you can change this out without ever touching the microscope itself. And beyond that, I believe you can screw on some other lenses to change the characteristics and the field of view of your microscope. Another thing I found is that I stand up a lot while I work and the ability to tilt this to the right angle for me is really nice where something like this, you would have to tilt the entire head of the unit. Now you can tilt the entire unit this way, but um, this one will allow you to tilt the screen independently of the optics. Now I wouldn't consider this device difficult to uh, focus, but as you can see, you kind of move the whole unit as you're trying to focus it and it has to be about perfect. If it's not perfect, it's not visible. And so, uh, you know, if I get here, I can kind of make out that little target symbol and I can see there's some etchings on here, but I never really get to the point where it's exactly visible. Now I can come up and down and try to get maybe a sweet spot on there, but the field of view is so narrow that it's just really hard to get it in a place where I can see words like this, where this one has a really nice smooth operation right here. As you can see, I'm barely shaking the unit, even though we're zoomed in so much. And I can come in here and just barely dial it in to where these words are crystal clear, even on a chip. Let me just give you an idea what you're looking at. You're looking at that tiny, tiny chip right there. And see, it makes it easy to just get it under here because I have the nice field of view. I can get it under there and place it really easily. Where something like this, I'm putting it in here. And I, I mean, I can get it, but it's just like, I honestly don't know where that chip is. Um, okay, so I can see this is the headers. I come down here, eh, eh, like, eh. You know, it's okay, like it's good. It's definitely doable for the price, it's great. But this is just magnificent. 
Now, if I sound over the top about this thing, it's not because a company contacted me and asked me to do a commercial for their microscope. It's I had gone around and done some research trying to find very specific features in a microscope, and I came across Andonstar, and they were nice enough to send me this one for review. So um, what I really wanted was this HDMI port. Now, this is mini HDMI, and it came with the cable. Uh, you could also use an adapter. Some of the Raspberry Pi models use mini HDMI, so I have a fair number of uh, connectors for those things. I would like to see full-size HDMI, but you're obviously not fitting it in this space. Uh, then it uses micro USB, which I'm great with. And one of the neat things is it comes with a uh, couple of cables. This first one is a micro USB cable that comes in here and attaches to this little remote here that allows you to adjust the lighting and to turn the unit on and off. Uh, and then it plugs right into the base. So you can use one uh, cable to plug the whole thing in. So that takes care of the lighting and all of the, uh, the control and the power and stuff like that. But um, you can also plug it just straight from this into the computer if you want to. Um, it also has micro SD, which I don't really use that much, but if I did want to record my sessions here, uh, I can. And I will say that the footage from this one comes out a lot less washed out than the other one. You, uh, you would expect to pretty much see what you see on the screen on the SD card, but that's not the case in my experience. Uh, in my experience, the video from the SD card on the other one is way more washed out than what I was seeing on the screen. And then we have this undocumented port here. Uh, I may try to find out what that is and I'll leave it in the comments if I do. As I mentioned before, when you use one of these microscopes over USB, you do lose a little bit of quality and you're introducing a little bit of lag to the screen. Uh, but it does have a couple of killer features. You just come up here to the software, which I did run through virus total. Uh, by the way, I checked it against 60 or 70 virus scanners. The software is clean, but you can open a device uh, with either Wi-Fi or by plugging it into the USB and then select the type of thing that you want to measure up top. So like in this situation, let's say I want to measure the circle or I'll at least come close. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and drag this in the circle and then double click. And you'll see that I've got my measurements and I can double click again to save them. And now ellipsis zero, it tells me a long radius, a short radius, the girth, uh, which is the circumference and the area of the circle. Uh, so I was able to get all that just by grabbing it on the screen. Now you can calibrate it and you basically put a millimeter ruler under there and measure it and all that kind of stuff. But there's all kinds of sweet things. You can come in here and uh, put a couple lines down and get some angles going and uh, let's do that and you're going to get 105.018 degree angle so you can do all kinds of different things on this that make it really um, kind of interesting having a laser cutter being able to to measure these things and get angles and stuff like that while i'm looking at them on the microscope just saves a step of having to bust out a caliper to do the same thing so overall the software is pretty cool um, you can control some features of the microscope with the software and uh, you can do screen recordings and just all the things that you would expect to be able to do but my favorite by far is definitely the measurement so my main usage for this thing is going to be to hook it up to a high resolution display and this thing can do 2880 by 2160 at 24 frames per second uh, 1080p at 60 frames per second and 720p at 120 frames per second this is a 720p screen so you're not going to get the absolute best quality out of it but it gives you an idea of what it looks like in real life and i can use the remote to change through the modes and things like that and uh, it's just really nice to get basically real-time video up on a large your screen just a couple of closing thoughts it does come with these little clips if you'd like to put them on the base here and view things like slides and all that kind of stuff sciencey type things um, also the more I use it the more I really like this wireless remote I use it for digital zooming and uh, also for taking quick snapshots and things like that it's nice to be able to do that stuff without actually touching the microscope and risking getting yourself out of focus one thing to consider is when you connect this to either the computer via USB or HDMI to another screen, you do lose access to this screen. And some people may find that a bummer. I have HDMI splitter, so it kind of works out for me, but I understand that that would be annoying to some. So uh, I do want to say that they have multiple units in multiple price ranges. So you may decide that if the HDMI is the killer feature for you, they have some that are a lot cheaper that have the HDMI feature. And I highly recommend checking those out. I'll have links to those in the description as well. So overall, who do I think this thing is for? I think it is 
excellent for teachers or presenters or anyone who needs to do this kind of work in front of a bunch of people. If you are doing streaming or anywhere where that HDMI feature is going to come in handy, uh, this thing is absolutely hard to beat. Other people may really want to be able to take advantage of the longer focal distance for things like soldering and stuff like that. If those features aren't important to you, I highly do recommend you check out the M and Star line. They have uh, these types of microscopes going down well under $100, going up in price to $400, $450, somewhere in that range. So they really do have something for pretty much everybody. So I do want to thank them for sending this out, and uh, I hope you enjoyed it. I love this thing. I think you're going to see it in some future videos, and uh, I'm going to be using it at work all the time. So hey, thanks for watching. Have a great day.